What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're doing a how-to today. Uh, we're going to be building a vibrating parts cleaner. Stay tuned. So here's the parts we'll be using to make our vibrating parts cleaner. Uh, on the right we have a vacuum cleaner motor and in the middle we got this electrical conglomerate that I put together. Uh, it's basically a miniature VFD um, so we can um, variably control AC current which is what this runs off of. So we'll be able to control the speed of the vibration. Uh, here's a container that I'm going to be using. Uh, I don't know what was in it. Doesn't really matter. Just some kind of plastic container with a lid would be fine. The base of the platform is going to be this piece of wood here. Uh, I'll be cutting my particular idea. It's going to require an 8 by 14 rectangle. So let me get uh, prepared for that. We'll get it cut out. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we got our piece of wood cut out. So I'm just going to lay my pieces on there. And this is gonna, really going to be the only two pieces on this piece of wood. So first thing we got is our container. And then we're going to mount the motor right here. And uh, those electrical uh, components I showed you earlier, um, they're just going to be kind of off to the side. I mean, that, that, that's a pre-made thing. Uh, so I'm not going to be mounting it anywhere on here. It's just going to be uh, hooking up the electrodes uh, to the ends of the, uh, to the wires on the motor. And off we go. And I don't know if I really explained how this thing's going to vibrate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be building a counterweighted piece that goes on the end of this shaft. And when it spins really fast, um, it's going to vibrate a lot. Um, if you picture how your, your cell phone, when it vibrates, there's a very small motor in there that has a counterweight uh, on the shaft. And, you know, you see how that does. It, it, it vibrates your entire phone. So we're just building a scaled up version of that. Uh, in hopes to shake the daylights out of anything in there. Uh, so next thing we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to determine the mounting. I think I'm going to make a bracket. Aluminum bracket is just going to go over the top of this thing and secure it down with a piece of wood. Uh, so let me go obtain the bracketry and we'll be right back and we'll get it bent into shape. Alright, <clears throat> so here's the bracketry that we're going to make. Uh, I wonder if it's going to be strong enough. I doubt it'll be strong enough, but we're gonna we're gonna use it because it's what I, it's what I have right now. Uh, this is a it's a one sixteenth one. Hold on, let me say that again. One sixteenth of an inch thick piece of uh, piece of aluminum. If it works and holds it down, then we'll roll with it. If not, then you know I'll just buy a piece of flat stock and we'll we'll make it again. Uh, so um, yeah, let's get this thing bent up. Um, that mark you see on there, that is a one inch mark, and that's gonna represent the foot that we're gonna drill a hole through. That's gonna mount this bracket. So let me uh, let me get it in a vice. We'll get it bent up. Okay, I got it bent. So now, <clears throat> all I'm going to do is just put it on here. Doesn't really matter where. Just got to get it right there. And then uh, just write, just make a mark. I think we'll bend it just below that line. Let's go do that. Got a bent. See how she fits. Yeah, looks good. Now let's make a mark. Looks like. Hope y'all can see through my fat head. I may have to block you for a second. Give me, give me one second, folks. I think we're gonna make that mark right there. All right. Alright guys, we got it bent. Let's go test fit it. So what I do here when I get to this this juncture, gonna make any other foot, just get it to the edge. 
Ooh, that fits good. Ooh, that fits real nice. Get it where it needs to be. Grab your marker. Are you guys even in frame? Let me check. Yeah. Push down. We're going to mark it. So we're going to bend it right here. Right there. And this will be our last bend. And then we're going to cut it off, and that'll be our bracket. So I'll see you at the vise. Oh, that's going to be good. That is going to be good. All right, let's get this thing cut off at one inch. We'll drill some holes, and that's going to be our bracket. Let's do that. Where we want to drill these holes. Anywhere is good. How about right here? Looks good. And how about right there? All right, guys, follow me to the drill press, and uh, we'll get these holes drilled. Okay, guys, we have gotten our holes drilled. Ta-da! Now, let's determine where we're going to drill this into our base. Excuse me, let me get out of the way. So, I'm thinking... I don't know. It, there's nothing precision here. I mean, seriously. All we're doing is building something to vibrate. So. I mean. We just got to get it straight. I mean, you know. Let me squeeze it. Let me squeeze it together. That way it's got a good clamp. Yeah, okay. You we're know, gonna make our marks where we think we want it. Thinking right here. Pretty straight, I guess. <clears throat> Alright. Let me go drill these holes. Be right back. Okay, guys. Oop. Extreme close up. Sorry. Got the holes drilled. Let's mount it up. See if it's even going to work at all. guys and if I need to tighten this thing up all I got to do is maybe shim put shim under here maybe but I think it's gonna be okay I mean even if the motors vibrating it's still gonna be fine because that's what we want I mean it's a little loose in there but I think for what we're trying to do it's gonna be it's gonna be all right Let's see. Let me make sure y'all can see that. Let me get you back here. I'm, uh, all right. Let me bring it up close. Oop. Whoa. Where you at? Oh, there you are. So that's what we got so far, guys. So now what I suggest or vote that we do is weld our nut onto this collar. And uh, we'll take it for a test spin. So let me get prepared for that. And we'll be right back. All right, <clears throat> I pulled you off tripod for this one to kind of give you an idea of how the setup is going to work. Uh, so I got a hair dryer cord with a, uh, I guess, a, what do they call those? Default thing? I don't know. Anyway, so there's all the electronics, on-off switch. There's the VFD. Everything's hooked up, plugged in. So we're going to ease into it. Turn it on. 
We need to turn this, and that motor's gonna start turning. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh boy, that's gonna be real nice. Okay, cool. Awesome, man, that is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, let me unplug it before I electrocute myself. But I just want to bring you in close, give you an idea. That was the, that's, that's the straight up concept and it works. So what I can do is eventually I can, you know, build a flywheel, an offset flywheel maybe, you know. Or I can leave this here, who knows. Um, let's go to the next step. Um, I need to get the container mounted and secured on there. And uh, let's do that. All right, guys. So off camera... I made some feet, just out of some bolts. There's still some holes in the corners and just bolted it together. Um, I thought I was filming that, but I forgot to hit record. So what I'm thinking, anyway, so we're, we're moving on. So what I'm thinking, for the mount, I'm thinking about just tracing the, uh, the bottom of this container and then cutting that hole out and then just kind of bolting that down. And then that way this will just set right down in there and uh, hopefully that'll hold it in place. I don't know. We'll see. I think it'll work. So uh, let me get some materials in place and uh, we'll get that on film. All right, guys. So I got my seven by seven square, or at least that's what I determined the, the size needed to be. Um, so now what I want to do is essentially trace this out onto it and then uh, just cut this hole and then mount this whole 7x7 down on the base. So, I just wonder, I mean, not that this needs to be precision or anything, but I just wonder, oops, I just wonder, let's see. Hundred twenty five millimeter. See, it's actually this this lid is actually just a touch bigger. Well, let me let me measure the top. Let's measure the top and see. Because it looks like it's a little bit more narrow. Let's see. Lock it down. Yeah, it's almost two millimeters more narrow. So Yeah, I'm thinking that I can just trace this top of this lid out, this side of the lid on here, and uh, just cut it out in a circle. And that's what's gonna house the container. That's my marker, here's my marker. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but this is just me. All right, let's go ahead and trace this out on here. Okay, can y'all see that? Can y'all see that circle? Okay, that's what we're cutting out. All right, let me get the jigsaw. All right, guys, I'll be right back. There she is, old trusty jigsaw. Uh, so <clears throat> off camera, I got the pilot hole drilled. Uh, so let's go ahead and cut us a circle. And I, I apologize ahead of time because I'm probably gonna be getting in y'all's way, but you get the idea. All right, there it is. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's too much, too much movement. So, maybe I could just cut, cut it in fourths. Maybe like a one inch chunk out of the middle and then just screw the corners as close together as I can get them. I mean, I, I'm going to try it. I mean, because I don't like the way it is now, so what's going to happen? 
I don't know. So let me, I'm going to off camera this and, I'll, and I'm going to pick you guys right back up right here. So I'm going I'm to off camera cut those and uh, we're going to see how that does. Yeah, I just want to let y'all know, y'all are watching real time improv at this point. So I did what I said, I cut it in fourths. And yeah, I had the idea, well, maybe I could just stack them up. And uh, that'll, that'll give me a little bit of uh, a higher reach up the side of the uh, container. And I think that's probably what I'm going to do. So I'm thinking probably something probably along those lines like that right there. So now I just got to drill some holes. And uh, yeah, let me drill some holes in these things. And we're going to take them over to the uh, belt sander. Clean them up a little bit. And I'll be right back. What's up, guys? Welcome to my belt sander. Um, through the magic of video, we are now 24 hours into the future. Um, I had to get a belt for the belt sander. Uh, so we're going to pick up where we left off. We got these pieces right here. I bolted them together. And what we're going to do is use the belt sander uh, to unify these and make them one. So let's do that. Got y'all back at the table. I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Let me unbolt these. So these two pieces are somewhat close. Let me have a set here. Get those off of there real quick. Actually, we're gonna have a set on this side. A set right here in the corner. Sorry if I'm in the way. So that's what I'm thinking right there. So let me mark up these holes. Get the drills hold. Uh, uh, get the drills hold. Get the holes drilled in the base, and uh, we'll get the uh, the bracketry mounted down. And then uh, I, think, I think I'm gonna, gonna bust a, a Velcro strap today, and I think this is what I'm going to use to maybe secure over the top of it to keep it from bouncing around too much. So let's go ahead and get those holes drilled. We'll be right back at it. All right, guys, got the holes drilled. I did it off camera. I didn't want to bore you with my drill press to work. Uh, drilling wood is really <laughs> there's no science behind it. Uh, so let's uh, let's bolt the uh, bracketry on here, and uh, we'll see how it looks. Hi guys, there it is. I, th I thought I would share the moment of truth with you guys. Please fit. Oh. Mmm. Lincoln, look at that. Look at that. Dude, that's perfect. That's cool. What do you think, buddy? Good. Yeah? Oh, that's so perfect. Alright guys, um, we are almost ready for to clean something. Uh, let me um, let me open up these straps, take a look, and uh, we'll be right back to you. There it is. I believe we are at that moment to which we can try to clean something. So, 
I mean, that's that's my idea right there. That's it. So now, there's no way that I would build this and not try to clean something for you guys. I have probably the nastiest carburetor known to man in my shop. So hang tight. I'll be right back, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. There she is. Look at this thing. I hope y'all can see this. I mean, I just the sun's coming right down. It's off a, uh, it's off a GX200. It's an OEM carb, so it's a good carb. Um, she's a little rusty. Here's the here's the bowl. What's going going on under here? The only problem is see the uh, see the neck right there. Oh, focus! See the neck it broke. I I don't know how, but I don't know. Let me take this thing apart, and we just want to throw parts and pieces in there. And uh, this is going to be the ultimate test. So. Let me get this thing apart. We'll throw it in the cleaner, fire it up, and we're going to wait an hour, and then we'll, we're going to come back and check it out. All right, got her apart. I just want to bring y'all in close. Come on, focus. I mean, you know. <laughs> Motion tube, jet, float, needle. I mean, she is raw, rough. So, all right. I'm going to tripod you guys, and we're going to load it up and uh, show you what I'm doing. Oh, by the way, I'm using Simple Green. So I'm going to make excuses right now. If this don't work, it's Simple Green's fault. Just kidding. I like Simple Green. All right. Let's, uh, let's tripod you guys, and uh, let's load it up, and let's turn it on. All right, well, I'm using full strength <laughs> Simple Green too. It's non-diluted, so I don't know. That's probably way too much, but whatever. <clears throat> All right, here we go. I'm about to fire it up. Homemade vibrating parts cleaner for the first time. Let's see if it vibrates off the table, which I'm pretty sure it probably will. Ready, bud? Yeah. Let's see what happens. Get behind me. Oh yeah, it's vibrating. Throw it down a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely vibrating. Get behind me, Link. Well, I will see you guys in an hour. All right, guys, and through the magic of video, we have arrived one hour later. Uh, I brought some water down to wash the parts, and it, it makes a perfect demonstration of the vibration that's going on. So, but uh, yeah, let me uh, let me tripod you guys. Uh, I'm gonna pull the parts out. I'm gonna dunk them off in here, and then uh, we're gonna take a gander. Be right back.
All right, here's the parts. I mean, I guess it did okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not blown away. I mean, the emulsion tube and jet turned out all right, I guess. But let me uh, get the carb and take a look at it. The outside of the carb looks pretty good. Make sure I don't drop it on the ground. I mean, it looks a lot better. The inside's still pretty gummed up and rusted. I think I need to, for something that's this bad, I may need to use a, something a little bit stronger. I don't know. I got some purple power. Maybe I can try that. Uh, I've heard CLR works. Float. It still floats. So that's good. All right. Well, those are the parts. So let me stand here and ponder real quick, and we'll be right back. All right. So after a few minutes of being in uh, the stand and stare phase, uh, I was thinking about the solution. The, the, the cleaner itself, I think it's going to be a big factor in this. So... I'm gonna try something that I use when I when I clean rust and restore, you know, old rusted wrenches. Uh, I just use a, you know, I just, I just use simple white vinegar and water. Uh, in this case, I got probably 25% water, 75% vinegar. So I'm only gonna, only gonna let it roll for about 30 minutes, uh, and then we'll see how this does. And uh, let me turn it on, guys, and uh, I'll see you on 30 minutes. All right, guys, it's been 30 minutes on the vinegar and water solution. So let's uh, let's shut her down. Pull the parts, wash them off, and then uh, we'll go in close to take a peek. Alright guys. Let me uh sorry about the lighting, it got dark on me. Let me uh we bring it into the light, let's take a look. I mean, it does look better, I will say, you know, it, um, I think with a few minutes with a wire brush and a lot of this rust will be off of here, but uh, as far as the outside looks good, you know, the, the float area still is pretty grimy. Why are you not focusing? Well, I guess, oop. So yeah, the float area is still pretty grimy fuel shut off um i think this carb was just in that bad of shape i mean i you know I, it's probably the worst shaped carb i've seen in, the, in a good while you know i think with just a general carburetor that's not this bad this you know this thing probably worked quite right but let me uh let me get the float bowl when i rub my finger in there that rust will come off so i think uh you know that yeah, I mean the outside looks good. You know, it's just the inside is pretty bad. I, you know, I think I need to spend a few minutes with a brush on these things. Um, the emulsion tube and jet. Let me see if I can get a focus here. You know, they look good. You know, I can see light through them, and you know, it definitely cleaned them up a lot. But uh, you know, overall, I'd say this is a pretty good good success. I mean, I, you know, I think it's just going to come down to maybe a little bit of, you know, after cleaning, cleanup. I guess you would say with a brush, but you know. I think with a carb that's not this bad, I think the results would be more, would be better. But, I, you know, like I said, I mean, you know, this is just, I'm going to go ahead and say this is good. This is version one. You know, I already see things that are a problem. Uh, first and foremost, this motor, I don't think it's going to work out because I'm having a hard time controlling the speed. I'm, I'm constantly having to watch it because it's either going fast or it's going either going too fast or too slow. So I think I'm going to get a, an AC to DC inverter and swap over to a, a DC motor where I can more easily control the speed of it. And uh, I think that that alone is going to make a big difference because, you know, I came out once and my my test water was barely vibrating. So, you know, th there's a few things. Uh, this is this is version one. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep ham hammering away, plugging away at this because I really want one of these. But... Guys, I'm going to go ahead and call it. This video is already uh, atrociously long. We're looking at about a 25, 26 minute video. I appreciate you guys coming along with me on this journey of construction that I've got here. Um, please leave me a comment if you like what you see. You know, Give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe to see more custom builds. Anyway, guys, y'all have a great night. We'll see you on the next one.